I want to read you this comment that I got on a recent Instagram post. It says, I make music myself. I started recently, so do you have some advice? And this was my reply. Just keep creating consistently and give yourself permission to make mistakes. Being kind to people will help you build a community as your skills grow. It's a marathon. Best wishes. Now, I'm going to try to be as transparent as possible in this video. See, the truth is, I have been really invested in this YouTube channel and trying to make it grow as fast as possible this year. Crazy, right? And in doing so, as you do, I've gone to YouTube and I've looked up how to grow a channel as fast as possible. And I see lots of big creators who have millions of subscribers at this point on the platform talk about how you should always just go all in, you have nothing to lose, why are you fearing failure when you would much rather have tried and failed than not tried at all and have to live with that regret. Generally good advice. However, what if you've put in more than full-time work for years, like since you were a little kid learning the craft, to get the one thing that you've always really wanted and be able to make a living off of the one thing you really love to do, and you still feel like you're failing miserably? Now what? I think this is something a lot of musicians can relate to. We've been doing music for our whole lives, most of us, and at some point we feel like there's going to be a big payoff. And then we slide into our mid-30s, and reality starts to set in. What if I never get where I want to be? Well, to take my own advice, it is most definitely a marathon. And you will get tired. The advice that you will get is to take breaks from social media. But because we feel so driven to create social content, being that that's really the only way for an independent to gain exposure these days, we feel the constant pressure to be there, be engaged, be building constantly. And you can take a break, but those breaks are really just to regain your priorities in life. They don't solve anything. When you come back, you're exactly where you left off. And that can get really discouraging and defeating. So why is music so hard? Why does it seem like such an insurmountable thing to build a career in music? The industry has been broken for a long time. This is not news to anyone. Music is worthless, so we feel like we have to sell ourselves. There's a reason I'm sitting in front of you right now talking to a camera, because I'm investing time in my YouTube channel to grow a following of not just my music, but myself. And as much as I enjoy creating content for this channel and really enjoy the ability to teach you some of the things that I've learned over the years, there is absolutely no doubt that it has taken away from the time and the enjoyment to some degree of my music making. As musicians, most of us are passionate perfectionists, and that's not a great combination in an industry that tells us that our work is worthless, we are constantly rejected at every turn, sometimes because we're just not ready yet, and other times just because there's so much out there to compete with. And even worse than the rejection is just having your work that you put so much time and energy and effort into, a lifetime in some cases, just be completely ignored altogether. Because we're highly passionate, we're also highly emotional. The highs take us too high. I talked in another video about how I got an early editorial placement on Spotify, and I was thinking, this is it. You know, this is finally what I've been working for all these years, even though I'd only been putting out music a couple years. I've been playing piano since I was eight years old. So it felt like a major payoff, when in reality, it was nice, but it definitely wasn't a career-making move. And the lows will take us too low. So we're prone to depression when things don't pan out the way we thought they would. One reason I'm making this video today for myself is because I just put out a YouTube video last week that I was super excited about. I went to the church, I ran a big church organ through a massive distortion and did all kinds of things that I thought would work really well and be really interesting. And that video was a total face plant out of the gate. And that ruined my entire day. And even though I have years of experience doing this and I'm kind of used to the rejection at this point, it still affects me more than it should. So why is everyone else doing better than I am? Well, the very platforms that give us most of our opportunities as independent artists feed into this mentality. And it's a bit of a flawed way of looking at things because <laughs> when views are the measure of success, you simply don't see the failures. They don't get views. There are more people failing at social media, there are more people failing at YouTube, there are more people failing in their business than there are successes. 
but you'll never see them. I think that's a really important thing to keep in mind. It's not that people only show you the best of themselves on social media, which is true to an extent, but it's that social media itself only shows you the things that it has shown lots of people that people are viewing. Therefore, it's a totally flawed way to gauge success. It's a totally flawed way to measure yourself against other people. You're always gonna feel like you're coming up short if you're just looking at the homepage of Instagram and wondering why all these people got views and you did not. The best thing you can do is zoom out and compare yourself to your past self. I know it's a bit of a cliche, but it's absolutely the only way to look at things and really truly measure your own growth. It's hard to do because the last thing that we wanna do is dwell on things that we've spent months and years sometimes working on. But as an example, if I put out that organ and distortion video, say a year ago, and it had gotten as many views as it got last week, I would have considered that a great success. So why then did I consider it a total failure last week? Because my expectations have changed. I feel like I'm entitled to more views at this point, when that's just not the case. I'm not sure I have any solutions in this video, but hopefully you won't feel quite so alone if you are in this kind of mental cycle. Ideally, we wouldn't get too high with our successes. We wouldn't get too low with our shortcomings. It's important to keep in mind the things that really matter, the people that you love around you, have a support system of friends and family. And to bring it back to that Instagram comment that I got, I totally stand by what I said. Just be kind, be nice to people, that will come back to you. And if you're an ass, that will also come back to you. People are not gonna wanna work with you if you let this machine of an industry make you a bitter, grumpy person. That is a death sentence. So if you can find a way to keep putting one foot in front of the other, you will get where you wanna go. You may not get there as fast as you wanna go. We're all going through the same thing. It's a constant struggle. Let's support each other. If you have anything to add, leave a comment below. I'd be happy to take a look at it. And now I'm gonna go back and watch this video eight or 10 times. Not because I'm a flaming narcissist, but because I need to hear it a lot. Thanks for giving me the time today, and I'll see you in the next one.